I'm going to show you right now is again an example of a problem that you already know how to do. I'm good. Except I'm going to do it a little different than the way you learned it. We don't teach it this way because it's a little unnecessarily confusing when you're working with uh, fractions using uh, whole numbers. But the idea is the same. So I'd like you to think about the, the way uh, the way I'm going to do this problem. And then we're going to apply it to polynomials. Suppose that I give you the fraction 3 eighths plus 5 twelfths. Well, what's the first thing that catches your eye? Different denominators. Different denominators, so you cannot proceed. You can just add the fractions the way they are, right? Although you, this is not the way you probably did it, this is what we're going to do with polynomials. When you see this, when you realize my denominators are different, what you're going to do is you are going to rewrite the numerators exactly as they are. You're not going to do anything to the numerator. You're just going to leave it alone. Your denominators, however, you're going to factor. We're going to factor the denominators. Now, in the case of whole numbers, what I mean by factoring, I mean let's write them as the product of prime numbers. Eight is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. What about 12? 2 times 2 is 4. Times 3. Times 3 is 12. There it is. So once you factor in your denominators, what remains for you to do is to look and ask yourself, how do we make them identical? We're going to make them identical when the denominators in both fractions have exactly the same factor. So here's what I say. I look at this one and I say, do I see anything here that's missing from this one? There's a 3 that's missing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this denominator by 3. Are they identical now? No. No, this one has three twos. This one has only two twos. What is this one missing? Extra two. two. I would multiply by two this denominator. And your experience tells you that when you multiply the bottom of a fraction by something, what do you need to do to make sure the fraction doesn't change in value? The top. The top has to be multiplied by the same factor. What did we multiply by this denominator? Three. By three, we need to multiply this numerator by three. What did we multiply this denominator by? Six. And now your denominators are identical. They are identical. Now when it comes to numbers, we probably want to multiply this. You know, just Where does that 2 come from? On the other side? This one? Yeah. From down here. Now, where did this one come from? Yeah. When I looked at the denominators here, they weren't identical. This one only had two factors of 2. This one had 3. 1, 2, 3. So it was missing 1. So I multiplied. That three. That's right. Oh, so okay. I multiplied by 3. Whatever will make them identical. That's what I was going after. Now, once you have that, what you're going to do is you multiply your numerators. 3 times 3 is? 9. What's my denominator here? 2 24. times 2 is 4. 8, 24. Plus 5 times 2. 10. And 2 times 2 is 4. Times 3 is 12. Times 2 is 24, as expected. They're identical, right? And now you have fractions. We're back to the original type of problem. Does that make sense? And then we just... Uh, write this out. Uh, this would be 19 over 24. Can we simplify 19 and 24? No. No. There's no common factors. We're done. I just want to emphasize the steps. When your denominators are different, you copy the fractions, leaving the, the numerators unchanged. You don't do anything to them because they, they don't matter. What, what's giving us a hard time is the bottom numbers, right? Yes. So we factor the denominators, and once they are factored, we make them identical by making sure we multiply each denominator by the factors they're missing. So that in the end, look, they both have one, two, three, four factors and they're identical. Three twos and one three. And then whenever you multiply the bottom of a fraction, you multiply the top and then everything works very nicely. We're back into the type of problem that we already know how to solve. This, this is the first one where the denominators are different. 2x squared plus x over 2x minus 2x plus 1 over 3. Are the denominators the same or different? Different. different? different. So what we need to do is factor the denominators. 
Can I factor 2x? Is there anything here? No. Can I factor the 3? No. No. That's it. So I got really those two factors. 2x is my only factor here. If you want, you can do this to say, all right, those are my denominators so far. They're not identical. I couldn't factor them. So I'm going to make them identical by multiplying this fraction, this denominator, by anything that's missing that we see over here. What's missing here? Three. A uh, three is missing. All right. What about uh, what's missing here? Two x. Two x. All right. So now they're identical. The denominators are identical. I have a two x and a three. I have a two x and a three. Now I need to make sure that the, the, the fractions get adjusted. Because I multiply the bottom of this fraction by 3, what do I need to do on the top? Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3. Now be careful. When your numerator has more than one term, like in this case, you need to put what? Parentheses. To remind you, everything here has to be multiplied by 3. Would it be wrong to put it on the front? No. Nope. It would be perfectly OK. Perfectly OK. Because multiplication is commutative. Right? You can multiply 3 on either side you get the same answer. Now, what do I need to multiply this numerator by? 2x. Uh, and as we did before, we need to multiply this out what's going to be 3 times 2x squared? 6x squared. 6x squared plus 3 times x is? 3x. 3x. What's my denominator? 2x times 3. 2x times 3. You can, you can write it like that, or if you want to write 6x, it's fine with me. Um, if you just want to leave it in factor form, see, in case we can cancel something, that's okay. So we're going to 3 times 2x as the denominator. Now over here I have 2x times 2x. 4x squared. 4x squared. And 2x times 1. 2x. 2x. All right, now notice where we are. We are now at a point at the type of problems that we were solving a little while ago. We have the same denominators. We have a subtraction. We know what to do next. When you have the same denominator and you, you want to make sure you don't mess up with this sign, what did I tell you to do? Change it to Change addition. Change it to an addition and then do what to all the numbers up here? Opposite. Change the sign. So here's what I would do. Make this a plus. This 4x squared becomes? Negative. And this positive 2x becomes? Negative. And now just combine like terms. So we have our denominator. You can write 6x if you like. I'm going to leave the 3 times 2x for now. All right, so let's see what we have. 6x squared minus 4x squared. What is that? 2x squared. 2x squared. Uh, 3x minus 2x. X. Positive x. Can I factor the top? No. There's nothing. No. Oh, yes, I can. I'm so sorry. There is something. What is it? The x. The x. I almost missed it. Okay. X times 2x plus 1. And on the bottom, I have 3 times 2x. Now, this is going to confuse some of you because I wrote it in parentheses. So I hope if I do this, It'll be easier to see that when you multiply 2 times x, you don't need parentheses. You can just say 2 times x like that. The reason I rewrote it this way was so that you can see that you can cancel something. What can ca what the can the x. x can go? This is not like they're together. You know, they, they both go. There's no addition here. There's multiplication, so that's what it means. So why can't we separate the other ones? Those are because, the because of the plus. Mm -hmm. if, if I got here 2 plus x, if that was 2 plus x, then we're stuck with the parentheses. The parentheses has to stay there, and then either the whole thing will go or nothing will go. But it's multiplication, so 3 times 2 times x can be written this way. Another thing that you might have seen is if you write it just easily as 6x, if you just write 6x, maybe you can see that what can we cancel here? The x. The x, the x uh, goes away. This 6x would be like this. That's probably a little easier to understand. So tell me what's your final answer. 
2x plus 1 over 6. 2x plus 1 over 6. Wonderful. 2x plus 1 over 6. Can I reduce the 2 and the 6? No. No, because of this plus right here. It keeps me from reducing the spread. Right there. That's as far as we can.